And we're going to start at 2, week 1. And from 1, we're going to go move down to see I'll handle it. Oh, 
earlier, Jesus called him Israel. Okay? He had the line of Judea, the Judean. And he gave birth to Hallelujah, a man by the name of David. We know that God says that David was a man of the God of own heart. You look at David's story and you say to yourself, how could he be when he was a murderer of his best friend? How could he be when he married a woman that was in the house? Again, mysteries of God and why we have the priesthood. Yes. Come on, Lord. I don't know how many of you would want to serve Christ. I love the most when the woman, hallelujah, that followed him everywhere he went. She came unto him and hallelujah, while he was in the small city and they began to want to stone her for this woman was a prostitute. And God said unto them, them, ye will not sin and cast her stone. You see, that's why I say to them, you don't have to like me, but the words of not of me, it's not of me, it's of God. For I cry to him, I stay in him, before I know he is the most high priest, the most high God, and I knew through him he called me as a child. But what he gave me, I can't keep. All right. Because somebody, hallelujah, somebody who didn't know these things will walk in here a different person. Mm. You see, I want you to understand that back to the story that I was telling you that, hallelujah, Abraham, this old man, hallelujah, who at this time, he was not an Israelite, he was not, hallelujah, a Hebrew, he was from a foreign land, hallelujah. God called him, he had something like 12 rounds. God called him and he answered. Yeah, yeah. God promised to make him a man as many stars in the sky, as many sands in the sea. Right. He said, I'll make you that man. But little did he know he would carry a little boy crying in the song one time. Mary, did you know that you would carry God? Yes, yes. Did you know, Mary? Did you know? This man by the name of Jesus. Oh, now we're in the New Testament. We're no longer in the Old Testament. We're now in the book of Matthews and Mark and Luke. And they all tell his story. And I want you to understand one thing about Jesus. He said, I came unto my own, and my own received me not. So you think we as ministers have a problem with being attacked? No, we don't. We should fall upon our knees and say, Thank you, Jesus. You should fall upon your knees when they attack you and say, Thank you, Jesus. Because you know who you are then, because you are a child of God. <laughs> Walk in it, the Bible says. Walk in the light, hallelujah. Yes. For God is in the light. There's no darkness for you. Yes. For you are a child of the most high God, the most high priest. <laughs> These two priests were in between one thing, the Levitical priest Aaron. Let's talk about Aaron. Aaron was bro he was the brother of Moses, who in the Old Testament was hallelujah, sent to lead hallelujah, the Hebrews from the from Pharaoh, who was an Egyptian, to be free. Moses was raised with Pharaoh's son, who probably didn't like him, but hallelujah, his sister, his sister loved Moses. Moses was a man that stuttered in his speech, even though his speech might have been bad. This man was wise, hallelujah. You understand me? I'm not just talking about wise in the flesh. I'm talking about wise in the spirit. Confused at first, but after 40 years, hallelujah, God called his name, Mr. Mount Sinai. And he heard him. Yes, yes. And he began to climb the mountain. Yeah. And when he got there, he seen a burning bush. God said, take off those shoes. Your pastor preached last Sunday before you stand on the ground. This was the beginning, hallelujah, of the second priesthood. As he stood there, God said, go back to that city which you came from and release my people. People have heard their promise. Now, I want everybody to understand that had to be a hard job. So if you think being saved is easy, don't fool yourself. Because every day we should repent of our sins. Every day, because if you think you don't sin, the Bible says you say you're a sinner, but a sinner, you're a liar. Let me tell you something, I repent sometimes for I was done my bad. Yeah. Yeah. How will I thank God, though, for them to walk up to me and say, Reverend Whitford, that's something you might should have thought about. Mm. God said, you know, God said, 
of two women for three for women, elder women for women, and elder men for men. Are we doing our job? Well, mm. Read. Read. These are titles for you all today is He will and you will answer. You will. Yes. You will. Woo! Jesus. about Moses, then Moses moving forth, he had to go back to his brother Aaron who loved him. Now at this time, Aaron's mother's passed, but his sister's alive, and Moses is humbly telling them that I am that I am sent me. You see, because first Moses didn't know how to go back and tell them these things, because Pharaoh served so many different kind of gods. Moses looked at it, but Moses was never with it. He carried a blanket, a Hebrew blanket with him. And he kept him very good. He knew he did not belong. Do you know today where you do not belong? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, all right. Moses began to answer, God sent him also to a priest. He married the priest's daughter. But he had to even leave her and go back and do God's will. Yes. But he got tired. Mm -hmm. And Aaron being with him and him thinking of this high priest, I've got to go answer to him. He tells him, I am that I am. Sit me. And he looks at him and tells him, okay. Then they begin to go to Pharaoh and command things out of Pharaoh by the blood of God. Let me tell you why I say by the blood of God. Because you see at this time they did sacrifices that killed the goat and the calf. It had to be perfect. They watched it for three to five days to make sure they were perfect and they would slaughter them. God asked him to keep the fat, hallelujah, for him and burn it because he loved the smell of fat. Come on now, Holy Ghost. He asked them to do small things before they get out into the desert. Oh, they did well while they were in bondage. But once let loose, once let loose, and they didn't make choices, hallelujah, that were not of God. Now, let me share this with you. While they were out here in this field, Moses just didn't get tired because he didn't want to do what God did. It's kind of hard to preach to somebody every morning and your life about you watch over while you're doing it. It's kind of hard to preach God's word to someone all the time and then for every time you turn around, this camp over here is fighting this camp. And this camp over here is fighting this God. This camp over here is doing that. Actually, Moses is hallelujah. Father-in-law came and told Moses, Moses, you need to hire some Hallelujah. We'll go over there and handle the calling of deacons. So they can handle the small problems. Because we as ministers have to be busy with the word. And if you think the word does not drain you, try preaching the gospel and be called to do it. You see, I am not running to him. I ain't got this much sense. But I'm not in denial. Because when Christ speaking God, he fills me with the blood. That's right. That's right. Yeah. He fills me with the blood. That's Moses had to be filled with the blood, but his anger, hallelujah, shows the first sign of the grace of God. That was the sign of him being free. He hit God. A rock. You never know when you're walking down the street who you're talking to. Right. You never know when you're standing and going through a boat who you're talking to. The Bible says, beware of the stranger for you might be the same man. So they hit you, but they hit you because you know who you are. But it's not.
He died for that. He died for that, and his two sons, who would have been Levitical priests behind him, died as well. You see, we can cause generational curses on our children. We can cause generational curses on not just your generation, then. The Bible says, what you expect in the third generation? You can come out of the child of the generational curse. And why is this? We're all burned up individually. Somebody somewhere did something before I was born. But God allowed me, hallelujah. My uncle Harold, hallelujah. You, somebody else. Yeah. 
not, let me show you, you should. Because you're not responsible for just you. You're really not responsible for just you. We are responsible for one another. The Bible says we are our brother's keeper. That is your motto in this church. Yeah. How many of you will see somebody fall and break your butt to help them get up? How many of you will go by when somebody is sick and say a prayer for them? You don't have to go by their house when you pray for them. I don't know about you, when it gets cloudy sometimes I get happy. 